Welcome today. We are so glad you are with us. We are in a room today of women. We're so excited to be with you. Hello, hello. Yeah, we get the clap going on. <laughs> Sometimes I see that on film and I'm like, you can't hear all the clapping in this room will be full of people. And there's like, we're all clapping for you. But we're glad you're here. You're special to us. Thank you so much for watching. I just feel like God has a very powerful word today. We are going to talk about three ways that you know that you can hear the voice of God. We're going to unlock the mystery to hearing powerful ways of knowing God is speaking to you. God is always speaking to his people. You may not think, well, I'm not God's person. Yes, you are. You are a child of God. If you are here, God already had plans for you before you even arrived, before mom and dad even thought about you. You were already in his heart. You have a purpose on this earth. If you were born, you were born at a perfect time, in a perfect place, in a special atmosphere of God. Yes, I know once we get here, it's not easy, is it? Once we get here, it feels like everything comes against us, but God has plans. And if you're here, you have a purpose on this earth and we can hear the voice of God. We can hear him speaking to us. And I'm going to give you three ways that you can com- that you can really and truly know you're hearing the voice of God. So. Number one, we are going to cultivate a heart that can listen to God. Because sometimes we're so busy, 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 or we're in a lot, a lot of hurt, or we're in a lot of anxiety, or there's a lot of challenges going on, or we've had one big massive crisis and we have said in our hearts, if God is real, he would have never let this happen. Can I just tell you that in those moments when you want to say, if God is really real, this would not have happened? No, God is real. And if you are in the middle of something, that is when you hold on to him the closest. When we were praying just before we started this show together, I just really saw in my vision just this massive ocean and it's busy and it's all going everywhere. And then I saw different ones of us just holding on to an inner tube, you know, those big black Fancy inner tubes are real thick ones out of the big old hunk and tires like you go and you see them, one of those derby things, a big tire, and we're just holding on. And those waves can go like this. But if you are holding on to that inner tube, that inner tube is not sinking as long as there is air in that inner tube. And that's God in the darkest moments of your life. He is the air in that inner tube that will go through the turbulent waters of life. It will go, I, I happen to know one of the people who say... <laughs> that they wrote that poem about the footprints in the sand. I don't know if you know this or not, but a lot of people claim to have written that. But this girl, she's a ventriloquist. She's from Canada. She's lovely. She and her mother swear that they wrote that poem together. It was her mom who wrote the poem and she had left the book on the beach, long story short. But who cares? That is an amazing poem. And maybe God, like she says, I just feel like God wanted to sew that poem into the world. And what the poem was, there were two sets of footprints But the minute life got tough, the minute life got hard, the minute life got destructive, all of a sudden there was one set of footprints. And the poem says something like, why would you have left me? And Jesus said, I didn't leave you. I picked you up and I carried you during that time. And then when we got through it, I set you down and the two sets of footprints continued on. And that's God today. He wants to speak to you. And he wants you to know he is with you. And we can develop the, a, 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 a real true sense of knowing. And we can develop a sense of knowing, uh-oh, that's not God. That's not God. So let's go right now to 1 Samuel 3. 1 Samuel 3. And I love this beautiful story. Before 3 is 1 Samuel 1. And that's about a precious girl named Hannah. And Hannah was barren and she wanted a baby and she had other wives in the family and Penina had all the kids. I call her Penny. And Penny was provoking her. It said she was agitating Hannah's sore, which is hard because when you agitate a sore, it's like getting a scab and you're like, okay, I'm going to be good. This sore is better. It's scabbed up. And you know how it feels when you rip a scab off? It's almost worse than actually getting the sore that developed the scab. One time I fell as a little girl and I literally just scraped myself all the way up. I slid down the cement and it, I, I stood up and it was everywhere. And my mother took the methylate top off and methyl, come on now, methylate will heal anything. I don't care what you, it'll heal gang green. I did not know this, but they developed methylate back in the day when they were laying the train tracks. 
and all the guys were getting infections in their hands and they developed methylate. But methylate has a price. Do you know what the price for methylate is? It burns. <laughs> and my mother would say, okay, take a deep breath, take a deep breath. And she poured it down my leg. Oh, fire. I was like, and then she poured it on my arm. It was crazy. So this is Hannah in her life. She has got scabs and somebody's picking her scab off because of her barrenness. So she goes to the temple and she begins to pray, God, hear me, hear me, hear me, hear me. And she was praying so hard that Eli, the priest said, woman, you shouldn't be drunk in the temple in the area that women were even allowed in. You should not even be in here and you shouldn't even be drunk. And she said, I am not drunk as you suppose, because later on, they claimed that they were drunk in Acts. But before that, Hannah was the first one. She's practically speaking in tongues. Jesus, 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 I want a baby. I want a baby. And then she makes a promise. God, if you give me a baby, I'm going to give him back to you. I'm going to take him to your temple and he can be your servant. Just give me a baby. And the Bible says that she washed her face after all her crying. She got strength back. She went and ate some food. She nourished herself after she washed her face. She nourished herself. And then the Bible says this, in the course of time, she conceived a baby. Sometimes the promise is in the course of time. And if God says there's a promise for you, sweetheart, there's a promise and you hold on to it and you don't let go. So now little Samuel's born, baby Samuel. And when Samuel is weaned from the breast, some people say, oh, that would have been sick. Some people say, no, 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 you wouldn't have presented him until 12. I don't know. But Samuel was a little guy when he was presented to the temple. And she gave beautiful Samuel, her, her little son, her firstborn son, her promise from God in the course of time. And she took that little man and she gave him to the temple of God and said, this is you are now your, your little guy, raise him up. Eli took him and began to raise him up in the things of God. So this little guy is now, we're going to go to Samuel 3. And this is when Samuel is in the temple. And it says in verse 1, the Lord ministered before, the boy Samuel ministered before the Lord under Eli. In those days, the word of the Lord was rare and there were many visions. People were having visions, but the actual word of the Lord was rare. And Samuel is learning now how to minister to the Lord. He's learning maybe how to be a greeter at the door. Yeah, I know. We all want the microphone. Oh, we all, blah, blah, blah. but you know what? You got to start out in the parking lot pulling the weeds. I have to talk and people look at our, wow, what you guys have done. Oh my goodness. All these things where well, y'all didn't see me in Canada, freezing cold, picking up the cigarette butts and the beer cans all over, ministering to the Lord in the small little tiny place when nobody was around. And that's how it is. You start where you're at. You don't feel like unworthy. You don't feel good enough. You don't feel like you're old enough, young enough, big enough, smart enough, trained enough, whatever enough to serve God. You serve him right where you are. Even if you're laying in a hospital bed today, you can love on people that come to help you. If you're in a place today that you feel locked up, there'll be somebody who needs to hear encouragement today. Even if you're in a place of loneliness and you feel isolated and you can't get anywhere, there's somebody you could text. There's somebody you could call. There's somebody you could reach out to and be a blessing to. You know, there's nothing that will heal your brokenness more than when you pray for somebody and you lift them up. You help to lift them up out of the muck and out of the mire. You remind them you're standing on a firm rock. You're standing on a firm rock today. Listen, God's speaking to you. And so now we have Samuel, little Samuel. And one night, Eli's eyes were becoming weak. And he could barely see. And he was lying down in his usual place. And the lamp of God had not yet gone out. And Samuel was lying down in the house of the Lord where the ark of God was. Could you imagine sleeping by the ark of God? Like, that is so amazing. And the Lord called to Samuel and Samuel said, here I am. Then he ran to Eli and he said, here I am. You called me. But Eli said, I didn't call you. Go now. Go back to sleep again a second time. No, no, no. He says, go back, Samuel. That wasn't me. Go back. And, and then on this time, he said, the Lord said to him now, don't call back to me. You go lie down. And Samuel did. 
and, and, and he said, Samuel, you need to know that the word of the Lord is going to be revealed to you. Don't come back to me again. Say, Lord, speak to me. And I want to stop right there and tell you this. Listening to the voice of the Lord takes time. It takes training. You cannot be fat, mad at yourself, down on yourself, discouraged at yourself, hurt because you missed the mark. You made the wrong choice. You made the wrong decision. Sometimes it feels like eeny, meeny, miny, mo. I just don't know which way to go. Like, I have no idea. Pick one. You know, like, and, and you just don't know. Like, what do I do? What do I do? Just take a deep breath. Sometimes we overanalyze everything. You don't need to ask God what side to part your hair on. But you can if you really needed to know. But I always say, just, just go with the flow. Some of us, we, we, we're on that inner tube and we're fighting it. We get on that inner tube in the, and we fight it, we fight it, we fight it. And it's like, no, 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 just be calm, stop. It's like when people go to be rescued in the water, a lifeguard, they go down under the water and turn the person around. Why? Because if you go to rescue them with their front at you, they're going to pull you down and probably drown. Both of you drown. So they go under the water and they turn the person around and they come up. So they fight like this and they can't fight like that. And now you can start to pull the person away. Today, calm down, relax, most beautiful one. You're going to hear from God. You're going to develop to hear it right. You can't just go on your feelings. Feelings change by the minute. <laughs> they change by the hour. They are according to our hormones, our role, what we ate for dinner last night. All the things. We can't go by emotions. We can't go by feelings. We can go by the voice of God speaking to us. And so my first point is cultivating a heart to listen. Blessed are those who listen to me, watching daily at my doors, waiting at my doorway, Proverbs 8, 34. And that means listening to God and not to others. If someone has spoken something over you that makes you feel bad, don't receive it. You know, I talk often, I'll say, you know, when I speak around the experience I had by being abused by the girl who lived next door to my grandma, Big Cindy, and I was little Cindy, and I loved her so much, but things got weird and she did things and she hurt me. But I want to tell you something. I could have gone through all of that and I did go through all of that. But what hurt me the worst was the verbal abuse. And I look at my little grandsonies and I see how little they all are. And I think, my gosh, I was that little when someone was saying the most ugly things to me. You're so ugly. Look at you. Nobody wants to be your friend. I mean, this is like an old, beautiful teenage girl telling me how ugly I am, how and she used bad words that aren't politically correct anymore, and, da, 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 and on and on. Abusive. I would have rather taken the physical abuse any day than the verbal abuse. And so as I became older and I found Jesus right around that time, I cried my little eyes out because I had found somebody that I could hear his voice ringing over the voices of those who were so brutal against me verbally. And many of us are still to this day with gray hairs. We are carrying around titles and things that people have said about us. I know so many girls who they will take an eating disorder back to a brother who called her fat all the time. Somebody who would never play the piano and yet that beautiful ministry is inside of them because the parents or somebody in the house was like, stop playing that piano. You play it so ridiculous. And it stole a gift away. Today, I want to pause and remind you, listen to the voice of God. It's telling us here, blessed are those who will listen to me. You're going to be blessed if you listen to me over the voices of others. The daddy who left us. Come on, somebody. Daddy issues. They hurt for all of us, male and female. But you know what I say? If somebody isn't good to something that's come from their loins, something that's come from their body, something that's come from them, and they can't be good to you, honey, it ain't about you. It is about them. They got the problems. They, they were raised crazy. They got the issues. They were abused. It comes down from the line, most beautiful one. And there comes a day where we have to treat those who have done that kind of thing to us, even the young girl who did what she did to me. I had to come to a point one day and realize she had her own issues. 
She had her own challenges and I was easy for her to mirror her pain off onto. And that's what happens a lot of times in our relationships. And we're carrying around all these burdens. We're carrying around all these challenges. We're carrying around all this rejection. We're carrying around all these words because it came from some ugly place and it was placed on a person and it's inside of them and it will come out at you. And today I pray in the name of Jesus, you'll just hold up a mirror in front of you and say, no, 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 it's not me. Look inside. It's you. You're talking to you. When you say, I'm all these things, no, no, no. It's coming from what's inside of you. You're mirroring your challenges onto me. And I am not going to listen to you because I will be blessed when I can listen to the voice of God. When I hear his promises over my life. It means that we have an eagerness, a readiness to receive wisdom, a consistent and persistent pursuit of understanding God's word over us. We align ourselves with God's ways and not the ways of others, not their titles over us, not their words over us, not their actions upon us in Jesus' name. And in this, you will lead a blessed and a fulfilled life. When you learn to listen to God over our circumstances, I had to stand today before I got up and spoke. They wanted to take my notes and put them up. For, oh, wait a minute. Mama's got to come. I got to read everything over out loud because if I don't, I'm going to stumble over my words the entire time because I flunked two grades in school. Yeah, I didn't flunk one. I flunked two. I do everything big. I not went first grade. I had to flunk first and third. And my father would say, you're going to be in seventh grade, driving to third grade, picking up all your friends from school and taking them to the third grade. I could see in my head. I saw myself in a little like red sports car, picking up my third grade friends, looking around and I'm going, I, I guess that's going to be kind of weird. They're my friends now, but maybe when I'm in seventh grade, it's not going to be so fun anymore. And I have these visions of myself and you're stupid and you're dumb and you're an idiot and all these things. And so when I get up here in front of a camera flipping, going all over the joint, oh my gosh, going out across the city and beyond on YouTube, people watch from all over. I'm like, dear Lord Jesus, help me because don't forget, I'm an idiot and I'm stupid and I'm done, but I can't even pass two grades in school. And, it, and so I have to calm myself down and read every word because I am going to be blessed by listening to the voice of God and not the voice of my past, not the voice of others, not the voice of my circumstance, but what God has called me to in his purpose. Number two, we're going to listen to God through his word. First Samuel 3, 21, going over here, God begins to speak to Samuel. Now he's listening to and it says in verse 10, the Lord came and he stood there. And as he called out, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So he took time to stop. And he had somebody tell him, his elder, his mentor, his pastor, his leader. He said, say to God, speak to me. And then don't come back to me. Listen to what he says to you. So Samuel developed a voice. From God, he developed hearing the voice to where it became his voice. And in those little boy days, in those young teen days, in the days of listening early to God, he became a prophet who prophesied amazing things because a mother believed in her barren womb and knew that God was going to bring a promise to the earth. And she was willing to go through and wait until that moment. Maybe God kept her barren at a purpose. And we blame God for things, not realizing he's truly setting us up for his assignment and not realizing there's reasons why the answer's no. There's reasons why you have to go through flunking school, being put down, living through a, a split family, going through all the issues we go through, publicly being slammed. All these things are setting you up for your assignment and you're blaming God and you're mad at God and you don't understand God. And so it's all his fault because it takes pressure off of you in the waiting place. God, I want to wait on you. What can I do in my waiting for you? And we learn now there was a reason why. Because Samuel had an assignment time and God looked down and he said, Hannah, now's your time. I need Samuel strategically here 
right here, right now, because he is going to be a prophet that is going to do amazing things. Most beautiful ones who are in this room and those of you who are watching, I want you to know God is positioning you. God is setting you up. And don't you dare let anything be stolen from you with the voice of God coming down into your hearts today. We're going to listen to God through his word. I loved growing up in school every single day. I went to Christian school because public school was eating me up and spitting me out. And my mom and dad said, you're going to Light and Life Christian School. So in Long Beach, California, I went to Light and Life until my church started a school. And when my church started a school, it was so amazing. And every day we had to take the Bible. We had a Bible in our little cubbies that we had. And we picked up our Bible every single morning. We would do a pledge allegiance to the flag pledge allegiance to the Christian flag, and we would put our hands on the Bible and say, this is my Bible. This is God's holy word. I will make it a lamp unto my feet and a light unto its path, and I will hide its words in my heart. Amen. And that was every single morning of my life. And I'm so thankful that during the darkest seasons of my life, God's lamp was there. It was a lamp unto my feet. His light lit up my path. I wanted my own path sometimes. I wanted to do my own thing sometimes. I thought, no, it's not supposed to go like this, God. It's supposed to go another way. And God's like, "Mm -mm, no, 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 no. It's, I got better. You think this is all it in a bag of chips? It's not. You got better. I've got better for you. Trust me. Trust me. Trust me in the little. Trust me in the big. God's got us. If you need wisdom, ask our generous God, and he will give it to you. He will not rebuke you ever for asking James 1.5. And now, because I'm coming down to the end, number three, we have to learn how to discern God's voice through confirmation and through the fruit of things that you see. Because I always say we don't want to be a flake, a fruit, and a nut. Yeah, we don't want to be a box of cereals for Jesus. Uh-uh, we want to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. We want to stand firm in what we know. We want to stand firm in knowing my God is a strong, mighty tower. The righteous will run into him and we're going to be safe. I don't care what goes on in this world, what bomb goes off, what sinks, what doesn't, whatever, all the money, monetary, this, Christian nationalism, whatever. Oh, I probably should have said that because YouTube will cancel me, whatever. I I get videos taken down all the time. I'm like, what did I say that was so wrong? I just don't know. I have, I thought I talked about Jesus. Maybe that's wrong. I don't know. I don't care because I'll never stop preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I'm going to stand firm in that. I'm going to stand strong in knowing who he is. Matthew 7, 16 says, by their fruit, you will recognize them. By something's fruit. You will recognize the right thing. When I met Pastor Stephen, I did not know him at all. I, oh, no, I did. I did. I did know him. I say that. I've only got four minutes, but I did know Pastor Stephen because when I was probably about 14, I wasn't driving yet. There was this really handsome guy sitting on a piano at my church and he was playing and he was dressed so different, like so handsome, like a dress shirt, like guys that I hung out with were wearing t-shirts all the time. They were lifeguard, you know, they just, they were Californians. Not this guy. He was like this French or European or something. And he was playing the piano with his nice pants on and his hair was all, I was like, I said, I want to bury somebody like him. Wow. He loves Jesus. He's on the piano. So when I heard about Stephen and I was going to meet Stephen, I had many people tell me of the fruit of the Bloomfield's life far before I got there. There was confirmation. Otherwise, I'd have never married him as quick as I did. Met him in a week, fell in love with each other, came home. And a few week, week, months later, he came, asked me to marry him. I said, yes, he came back in another couple months. We were married and I'm driving in a car off the Canada with somebody. I have no idea who they even are. Like I kissed him twice, basically, like, and now I'm off to Canada with him. But I knew his fruit because many people had already confirmed who he was. You have to judge circumstances and people by their fruit. Do people pick grapes from thorn bushes? No. Or fig figs from thistles? No. Likewise, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. A bad tree cannot bear good fruit. 
every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Thus, by their fruit, you will recognize them. So today we want to operate our life out of the fruit of other people, out of the fruit of how they treat other people, how they treat you. How What, what is the fruit of something that you're asking God about? He'll begin to speak to you and you look at someone's life and you can kind of like, oh, I get the fruit of that. Oh, okay, I understand that fruit. And it doesn't mean ever. I don't believe in this bull about cutting people off. All these things on the internet, people look for cool little sayings. Oh, I'm going to say a cool little saying. Oh, like all this stuff. Like, are we not big enough to love everybody? I didn't say you're going to have breakfast, lunch, and dinner with them. I didn't say ask them to move in with you. I didn't say marry the person. I said you be kind to people. I'm not talking about greasy grace where everything is just love, love, love. Really? Read Romans 1 because that'll set you really straight. It's not just about grace, but grace is there. But you won't, don't want to live your life like you have to bathe in it every night because your life has been so crazy, awful, and ridiculous. It's there for you when you need it. Do you understand what I'm saying? We become people who are people of God. We become strong in our word and our love for each other. I could go on and on about that. Maybe I should do a whole show on John Port. One, John 4, 1 through 3 says this, Dear friends, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God. Oh, my beautiful friend. God just wants to speak to you today. Above all, he wants you to hear his love for you. His unconditional love for you. That's right. Just be you. You don't have to change. Although, once you get to know Jesus, all of a sudden, you're like, I used to be so mean. I can't be mean to anybody anymore. I can't honk and give him the finger anymore. I can't say mean things online anymore. It's like you just don't want to. So it's not like, oh no, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna accept Jesus, but I don't want to hear anything from God because when he speaks to me, he's gonna rain fire down on my head. God just doesn't work like that. He loves you today right where you are. I hope you can accept him. Those of you who are trying to hear the voice of God, I pray you hear it more than ever. I pray that you develop just a beautiful cultivated heart that's open to hear him, a heart that's there that's just Jesus, speak to me. I hope you begin to stand on his word, learn his word. It's a light into your feet and it's a light. It's a lamp into your feet and a light into your path in the name of Jesus. I just pray that over your life. I pray that you can discern fruits. I love you. We love you. We're so glad you've been with us today. Let's give everybody a hand today who's been with us. We love you. Thank you for watching. Bless you today. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God.